I had another question, and this one's um, a fellow that uh, viewed one of Steve Shaw's videos, and he saw uh, Steve talking about uh, who I do watch occasionally, by the way. I have a great deal of respect for him. Very knowledgeable guy, puts up good content. I like him, and I like his personality, how he comes across in the video. Um, anyway, that's neither here nor there. Well, it is. It's important to me. But he asked about um, wrist straps, and Steve said, you know, it's a big mistake in the video he made. If you're not using wrist straps, you're doing back work. And the logic um, is sound advice, uh, sound conclusion, being that your back is capable of pulling so much more weight than you're capable of holding on to. So your grip is the weak link no matter what. And that's 100% true, 100% true. So that's why I would say um, for younger guys, right, just building your body just for the first time, not coming back and regaining some ground you've already been to, okay? Like I'll never be as big as I was before. So my situation is a little bit different. I'm on the down end. You know, I'm, I'm getting a little bit bigger, but I'm only going to get so big. I'm not, I'll never be as big as I used to be because I'll never do all that to get there. It's not that critical to me. So as an older guy with a lot of injuries and stuff, and especially since I had this slap tear and it's still recovering, it, it's certainly nowhere near 100%. It's recovered by leaps and bounds. I am able to do some uh, ridiculously incredible things with it versus what uh, surgeons predicted I would be able to do without the surgery. And I didn't have the surgery. But I still have to respect that if I get crazy and just pull too hard or, you know, uh, start really like yanking heavy weight around or putting too much on this shoulder, you know, too many leaps and bounds, like bumping up too, too high from you know, one workout to the next workout, right? Everything has to be like really in moderation. And um, I have to keep in mind what the shoulder's been through and where it's at right now. And if I overload it, I could absolutely rip it back apart. So for me, if I use straps, I'm going to pull more weight. I'm obviously going to move more weight. If I do not use straps, the benefit for me is if I can't hang on to it, I'm not going to utilize that weight. I'm not going to use a poundage I can't hang on to. So that's going to limit me to a point where as long as my form is good, I'm not yanking and jerking anything, it's pretty safe for me to do what I'm doing. And I'm still gradually increasing weight and I'm still getting bigger and the shoulder lags behind, but it's, it's growing. It's growing. So that works well for me. So for older guys, um, and I'll tell you another thing right now, there's a very famous pro bodybuilder who just experienced a muscle tear again, another tear. I don't think it's very serious, but it's, it's serious enough. And every single person knows who this person is. And I am not going to put him out there because he hasn't given me permission to put him out there. And it's completely his business. But the tear he experienced was with, as, as with many people, a very light weight. And it was just jerking the weight, just pulling, you know, really hard unexpectedly like he probably has done, you know, millions of times without giving it a second thought. But as we get older, okay, I will bet you $10 to a donut that he no longer supplements growth hormone. And without the growth hormone, you're really got to answer that. Might be my chick. Hang on. All right. Yes, it was my girl on the phone. On her way home from her, she's working her yoga certification, so it takes uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday a couple times a month for like six months or something. It's pretty extensive. Anyway, that leaves me to my own devices over a weekend, and I'm boring and old, so I don't know what to do with myself other than lift. Anyhow, back where I was. Without the growth hormone, as your body's own production in an older guy has diminished, growth hormone is a huge key player. Growth hormone is huge in uh, maintaining health and durability of your connective tissue. So with uh, you're, you're placed in a really precarious position once your own growth hormone drops off by the wayside and you don't supplement like I don't. So that's another reason why I have to be very cautious because I'm subject to more easily tear something. Another issue with tearing things is uh, uh, bodybuilding, in my opinion, at this degree, right, this, this all this hypertrophy, 
These are micro tears on top of micro tears on top of micro tears, you know, almost into infinity. I mean, you can't count them all up how many times these small fucking micro tears. And I believe just anecdotally, from what I've seen, I know a lot of people, key players in powerlifting and uh, bodybuilding. And it seems to me, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that bodybuilding is a lot harder and more precarious on the connective tissue over the course of time than powerlifting is. And that's why I've seen powerlifters who crossed over into bodybuilding and did very well. However, for a bodybuilder, a long-time bodybuilder, to cross over into powerlifting, that's asking for, you know, I'm not saying he's going to have a problem, but that elevates the risk factor for him. Just because if he's older, number one, and number two, if he's been lifting a long time and acquired a lot of muscle mass, he's had so many micro tears on top of micro tears, it's really hard. It's hard on you. It's hard on your connective tissue. It's hard on the muscle itself. And now you're going to start throwing max poundages on there, one rep pulls and, you know, lifts and things. Yeah, it's, it's not uncommon by any means to see tears. So I would think that in this instance, the person that I'm uh, speaking of had this new tear. I think he probably isn't supplementing GH anymore, which, you know, uh, he should be. He should be because, you know, a, a lot of guys, man, that I know have had these tears with these crazy little weights. That is just the way or the moment, the timing or however it just happens to contract or pull at that moment. That it's not always dependent on the amount of weight in case of bodybuilders. Because you've had all these micro tears over such a length of time and done this much damage. And um, you're older too, so you don't have the protection of your natural growth hormone. And if you're not replacing it yourself and you're supplementing GH, then you need to consider that. You have to take that into consideration. Now it could be he's, you know, still supplementing GH, but I would tend to doubt it. I'd be surprised to find that out, that he had this kind of tear if he's supplementing GH. I think that um, he's just starting to reach that age where the GH is down his natural production low enough that it's placing him in a really precarious position for tears. Now back to the straps, you know, um, which is another reason why... Uh, I don't need to, you know, put straps on and enable me to pull more with my back than what I'm capable of gripping. And I have a hell of a grip. And the other factor is, you know, I have some fucking monstrous forearms. My forearms, you know, if you see me at the Arnold in person, I have some awesome forearms. Uh, just the other day, somebody commented on them and said, Jesus, you got the biggest forearms I've ever seen. What do you do for them? And I don't really, and I don't have the biggest I've ever seen for sure, but they're pretty big. And I don't... Um, I've never really specifically targeted them very much. Lately, in the past couple of years, I do a little forearm stuff here and there. But to tell you the truth, I get in the gym, I want to get out of the gym. I want to do what I got to do and get it done. It has to be productive, but then I want to get the hell out. You know, that's, that's for me, there's nothing positive about just lingering in the gym anymore. I'm not a young guy. I don't want to hang in there all day. I have other things to do, a lot of other things to do, and time is of the essence. So... It's just, if I, you know, it's a win-win for me. It helps me play it a little safer without the straps. Um, I think it's a little bit easier on my connective tissue at my age. And dealing with this shoulder injury still, right? It's still susceptible more so than anybody else's shoulder that hasn't been through the shit I put this one through to being re-injured. And, uh, you know, the, the additional forearm growth from the grip strength. You know, as Steve pointed out, you know, as a uh, bodybuilding, you could work your grip strength separately and all that. But as a bodybuilder, right, I want a nice balanced physique. So part of me just tends to think that, yeah, I like to be able to grip what I want to pull. And my grip is fucking monstrous. It's monstrous. It really is. If I get a hold of something, I got a hold of it. And that's pretty much why, because I was never a huge strap guy. Now, when I went max poundages and I was really big, I would use straps, but only after my grip failed to the degree that I had like monkey grip, right? Like this, and the bar be coming out of my hands and my fingers could still hold it. And I've never hurt my hands. And I use my hands every day in my stock and trade at work. And I have to have really good dexterity. So, you know, that bar hanging off of here with 500 some pounds on it, right? Shrugging, uh, picking up from the floor with no straps, never caused me any damage to my, to my hands or, or any of that kind of stuff, tendons or any shit like that. So I think that that's helped, obviously, that's helped develop my forearms without me having to separately dedicate time just to work those bastards. 
bad enough I gotta work calves. All right, that's it. Just um, my two cents about straps. So a lot of times when I throw something out there to you guys, like everybody else, I'm subject to speak in the present tense. And a lot of times I fail to or neglect to point out to you, this is what I'm doing now. And here are the reasons why, because it's not what got me here initially. It's not what put on the initial size when I was coming up. It's not what gave me the new size as I was coming up. You know, I did use straps. I, uh, I did a lot of things differently. I lifted heavy, right? So, so where, what should you do? You should experiment. Wide range of reps, different things, and figure out what works best for you. That's what I would suggest. That's pretty much you got to find your own way, no matter whose advice you, know, you value or whatever. That's great. But eventually, you have to make your own homemade stew out of all these things. You throw them in there, stir them up, until you get the taste that you want, kind of sort of. All right? So that's it. I hope that was uh, adequate and explained things about straps. And, um, you know, shout out to Steve Shaw if you happen to be watching. I think he's a good dude. And I like his videos. I like his videos. All right, take care. Have an awesome night. And I'll catch you shortly.